I'm Colleen. And Cindy here. Thanks for joining us for episode six of Earth's History Explained by a Light Being. So for this series, our recurring guest has been the light being who once incarnated as Pele, so we call her Pele. And she's been joining us to bring messages about Earth's history, but also about Earth's future. And they've been amazing and hope inspiring and really surprising at times. And I can't wait to see what we're going to learn and what we're going to talk about today. So I'll pass things over to you, Cindy, so we can get our message. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I have no idea what to expect for today, but Pele is a bit of a firecracker, so I know it'll be good. Um, okay, I'm going to light my candle. And while I'm doing that, I just want to sort of remind everybody, of course, these messages are a bit out there and quite big sometimes. So always use your own discernment, what feels right for you. Take what you like, leave the rest. It's all good. And also sometimes the channeling process is, is um, you might want to speed that up. And so just up here, there's a little cogwheel in, in YouTube. And if you click on that, you can actually change the playback speed of this video and you can increase it so that it's it'll go by faster. So Colleen's the one who taught me how to do that one. Yep. Cindy will sound like a chipmunk, but the message will come in faster. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. I have a brand new candle today. Mm. All right. So I'll tilt this down so you can see a little bit of what's happening with my pendulum. So the pendulum is still, so I know my angels have stepped aside and someone else is here. This is Pele. We are going to look at a time in history that is related to what is about to happen on Earth. There have been many preparations for this time on Earth. And these preparations have been ongoing for a couple of centuries. These preparations have been ongoing for a couple of thousands of years. Okay, I laughed because she was like, what are you talking about? That is not what the message was. So she had to correct me, which is why I like using my pendulum, because she will correct me. A couple of thousands of years. You have a bit of humor about you today, Cindy. Why, thank you, Pele. You and Colleen are in a ripe mood for today's message. Okay. <clears throat> now back to the message. You are going to understand this period in history more and more as this awakening process unfolds and you begin 
to remember your past lives. You will begin to understand why things have unfolded as they have. And you will begin to understand how in depth the preparations have been, spanning over many, many lifetimes of each of you in preparation for this lifetime now. The period in history I wish to discuss is the lifetime of Jesus before his ministry. This is something that is not that is not about to be <clears throat> recreated. However, this has a lot of associations with what is about to happen with my birth. So, as I mentioned in the last message, Mary had a lot of help preparing for Jesus' birth. And she had a lot of help raising Jesus. Mary received regular messages from her guiding angels. And they helped her to understand the beauty and the uniqueness of raising Jesus. So Mary understood this unique role that she had and she was an awesome mother to Jesus. People don't understand how beautiful Mary was as a mother to Jesus. Mary also had other children at the same time. And these children were typical children and raising them was incredibly different than raising Jesus. Mary understood the purpose of Jesus's life. And she understood what was to unfold before it unfolded. She was given a heads up of major events that she benefited from having so that she could 
respond appropriately. This made Mary's life better in many ways. And it was also challenging in many ways. This will be the same for my mother. Some people here are concerned about my safety. I am well protected and my family is well protected. <clears throat> my life will not end in violence or before I am ready. I will not be living in karma and violence and physical harm are karmic experiences. These karmic experiences will simply not be a part of my life. Jesus was different. Jesus had some karma during his lifetime, even though he came to earth incarnated from the place where all souls are born. That time on earth was not a love energy that supported having no karma. My birth is what is bringing in <clears throat> the age of Dharma. There are a few people on earth who have completed their karma already. And they are living in this karmic world. And they are no longer bound by their contracts and karmic cycles. These people are peaceful and love-filled and are waiting for my birth to allow them to live in Dharma. Dharma is an age where people on earth are able to create their lives as they live on earth with no pre-signed contracts and no destiny and no restraints. Dharma allows for people to create and manifest their lives in the ways that people 
have been saying is possible for centuries already. However, this has not truly been possible while living in karma. You may create an experience and you may experience an experience differently with your attitude and attention. However, you are very, li very limited in how you can change your life to achieve the life of your dreams. This is not to say you cannot create within karma. You certainly can, and you do. However, this creation process is accomplished with your soul and your guiding angel. If you are trying to consciously create something, your soul and your guiding angel are able to help you if it aligns with your karmic experiences. When you walk this world in Dharma, you are your soul living consciously on earth. And you have full control over all your creations and manifestations on earth. There is no longer an unconscious part of you. This is when the laws of manifestation and creation will be yours to play with and create a magnificent life. Now, Back to Jesus. So Jesus had some karma to fulfill. And he accomplished that successfully. This karma of Jesus's was not in an effort to save humanity in the way it has been written. Jesus was here to accomplish the anchoring of this love energy imprint from the place where all souls are born. Then he also had some contracts with his, wait a second, nope, contracts with Nope. Contracts, was that correct? Yes. Okay. 
He also had some contracts that were not exactly as written either. Jesus never intended to be a savior of humanity. And yet, he understood that this was a possibility. This possibility is what ended up happening. But it was not what was intended. By this, I mean that Jesus was seen as a savior, not that he was a savior of humanity. Humanity does not need a savior. Humanity is a success beyond your wildest imagination. The idea of a savior came from the religious attempt to control a local group of people. The alterations to the story of Jesus were never meant to go worldwide. You must remember that 2,000 years ago, the idea of something being worldwide was not a common idea. There may have been a few people who could imagine something being being opened up to the whole world. But those people were rare and were not trying to control a local group of people. So the story of Jesus was altered to suit the requirements of a group of people who wanted to have others see this story in a particular light so that they would be easier to handle in certain situations. This actually started as a benign attempt to have people behave in an upwardly way. This attempt was not about control as much as it was about bringing people up into a higher civility. This altering 
of Jesus's story was all about bringing humanity to a higher level of civility. The beginnings of this narrative were very noble, really. There never was an attempt to try to create a religion to control people and keep them small and control them by fear. When the altered story of Jesus's life began, it was a simple alteration to try to encourage people to be more civil. This then took on a life of its own. There have been many different people involved in writing the stories that appear in the Bible. Some of the Gospels of Jesus' life are not even written by the people they claim to be written by. Others have been so heavily altered that the true story is completely lost. And then you have all the translations of the Bible and each translation changed the meanings of very important parts of the story. There are some truths within the Bible, of course. And there are similar strains of ideas within the Bible that you will see in the information I give to you. The first I wish to mention is the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There is some truth to this idea. However, it has been misunderstood. The Holy Trinity was never something that Jesus went around teaching. The Holy Trinity is a representation of the beginning of the idea 
of God. The idea of God began from the void. The void is source. The void is a is an infinite energy of potentials that has no form. God is pure potential energy. Then there was the first spark of light. And that spark of light once incarnated on earth as Jesus. There you have the sun. Now, the Holy Spirit is a bit more abstract and difficult to explain. The Holy Spirit is an energy that exists between all matter. And it is not the void. It is the vibration of the void, but in a different way. It is the energy of the void with a bit of motion to it. If you think of matter, matter has atoms within it, and those atoms are always moving. The void is still. The potential energy of God is still. And the spark that is Jesus is always moving. The energy between that is the Holy Spirit. This is an energy that is almost moving. It is potential energy like the void, but it has an essence to it that makes it more alive than the void. Not that the void is not alive. The void is a potential energy that has infinite potential. And the Holy Spirit is an energy that holds the energy of manifestation. It is like a thought before the thought happens. You have the void, which is a still mind 
with all the potential in all that is. And then the energy of the mind just before a thought occurs. That is the energy of the Holy Spirit. This energy of the Holy Spirit is very powerful. It holds all the energy of the void. However, it has been activated. This makes it ready and waiting to manifest anything you desire. The Holy Spirit is a manifestation energy. This manifestation energy is what allows things to be created in all that is. This manifestation energy is what lies between all matter and all energy in all that is. It is a special type of potential energy that is the step between the void and physical reality. Now, I'm going to explain something that will be a little bit exciting and a little bit unusual to some. Some people have explained the Holy Spirit as the breath of God. This is actually a great analogy. God is the void and it holds all the potential energy. The Holy Spirit is the breath of God. When God takes a breath in order to speak a new creation into existence, that breath is the Holy Spirit. That breath is the energy of God being activated to create something new. That breath is magical. And you were created in the image of God. You have this magical breath within you as well. You are not yet there in terms of activating this breath yet. 
However, when you live in Dharma, you will have this ability. Your breath will become your manifestation tool. There is more to this that we are going to explain later. However, just sit with the thought that your breath is a powerful manifestation tool. Now we are going to explain how the Holy Spirit exists within Mother Earth. The story goes that God breathed onto Earth and the Holy Spirit was infused within the earth. This is not just a story. The Holy Spirit does exist within the earth. The earth herself holds the energy of this creation energy activated within her. So that was creation earth activated, like that's the thing, that's the Holy Spirit. This creation energy activated is held within Mother Earth herself. This energy is what people feel with different crystals and stones. The energy of the Holy Spirit lies within every crystal and stone on earth. And this is what is going to become a very powerful tool for your own source of energy on earth. Once you have made first contact with the beings of light that are going to share this information, you will begin to understand how to activate the energy held within each crystal and stone on earth. This will change the world as you know it. The crystals and stones that people are working with now are about to change. As the love energy on earth 
increases and becomes a more and more powerful love energy imprint. These crystals and stones will wake up as well. When these crystals and stones wake up, everything will change. Every crystal and stone on earth has an energy. And this energy is the energy of creation activated. These crystals and stones are going to become a very important part of everyone's lives. This can be any stone you wish. There is nothing special about stones you purchase from a store. Go for a walk and find a stone you like. However, crystals do have a, an important role to play other than creating and manifesting. Crystals have a special energy above stones. aside from stones. Because they didn't want to make it sound like they're better than, like it's not above, the way we think of above. <laughs> the crystals on earth have a secret that they are going to reveal in good time. There is something I will share now that relates back to Jesus and his life before his ministry. Jesus was aware of all that is, while he was incarnated as Jesus. He was fully conscious of who he was, is. And He was able to access energy that he used to help him help others around him. He accessed this energy by tapping into Mother Earth and using 
the Holy Spirit that is stored in crystals and stones of Mother Earth. Jesus always walked with a stone in his pocket. Okay, and with that, she's taking a break. My goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if this was a video, I would be rewinding to we to listen to all that again because that was an hour long message. Oh my god, was How's it your arm? <laughs> it's actually okay. I've been I've been working out with with the private reading, so I'm kind of. Oh, there you I'm, go. Holy smokes! <laughs> holy smokes! That was not. I didn't intend. Okay, I have to. I'm going to just start because there's so much there. I don't even know where to start. So I just have to tell you about something that happened today. Like a premonition or something about this message. So I got my little, not much, like behind me here on, on the screen, right? Of the my little plant and that. So today I really very, 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 very strongly wanted to add this. My, uh, what do you call that? Abalone shell of crystals from my like altar in my room. And then I spent like all this time rearranging them, like not even knowing what I was doing. Just anyway, of how I wanted them to be sitting because I wanted them in the shot. And then I adjusted my camera and everything. And then the message is about crystals. Cause I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, I'm not even that into crystals. I'm like, you know, most of these actually very, quite a few of those you've bought me or my daughter has bought me. Yeah. So I just thought it was neat. I made a note here. Talk about <laughs> why did I? <laughs> there must have been some kind of premonition that the, there was something going to be something about crystals in the message. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just blown away because I've said before, I'm not really a religious person, and especially like I mean, I was baptized as a kid, Presbyterian or whatever it is. Like, but I'm certainly not like the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, like all of that. Like that's not part of my experience. No, anymore. and. Like the yeah, the Holy Spirit. Like I know nothing <laughs> about this stuff. So it's really bizarre to be channeling information about something. Like when I don't know what the general belief is about these things, you know. So I don't know if I'm if I'm upsetting everybody or if I'm, or if I'm wow. confirming <laughs> things. Like I have no idea because I don't know what although oh, it said, doesn't matter. You're not doing yeah. any of it. This You're channeling true. Pele who yeah. is giving us messages like, okay, so this, if ever, if, if, if people who've been like, understand folks, I, I understand what you're feeling, Cindy. Like you just said a whole bunch of stuff about Jesus and religion and the story and what was real about the story and what was it and all that. But like, if people are watching these videos and have watched the past <laughs> episodes of this series, <laughs> it's not the first history we've weave like the Pele has knocked off the books yeah. and it's not the first um wild revelation yes. that has come right like aliens and all that stuff so yeah. like i understand your fear like um yeah. uh, the word's not fear Thank but you. anyway it's okay you didn't say it Pele did i've been doing this with cindy a long time this is Pele. like i don't know if you can see the i can i'm much better at watching your pendulum now okay and uh yeah, for a little while it was like uh yeah, there was a lot of energy there. Right near the end? Yeah. It was like usually it's pretty smooth the way it goes around to the letters for you, but it was uh doing a really neat thing. Anyway, yeah, you didn't say the energy it, it's up. okay. There's a lot of energy when the energy builds up, it kind of does that. Oh, what well, was the first time I had noticed it? Yeah. But I love that she said that the people who altered the Bible did it with the intention of bringing civility. more civility to their small corner of the world, right? Like they, they never had these grandiose expectations that this was going to become what it became, you know, like it started like it with this really benign, Hey guys, like, let's, let's help people be better. We'll, we'll create this story and, and we'll encourage people to be better people. You know what it reminded me? Okay. Yeah. Like it wasn't an evil plan to control yeah. like, 
some people who are uh, against religion or critical of religion believe that it's, yeah, for like evil control purposes. So, you know, that's not the case. It was for, so the civilities thing made me think, okay, spoiler alert, but I just can't imagine how there'd be kids watching this. <laughs> it made me think of Santa, how Santa was, you know, um, is to, to get you, really, to me, Santa was to get people, that whole, or Santa's not going to bring you any gifts part, I meant. Yeah, Sorry. That's heartbreaking. Using Santa to control behavior, you know? But it's not really to be evil. They're not, parents who do that aren't doing it to be evil. They're trying to get their kid to act <laughs> civil. And I know, like, you know, I have wonderful daughters and they were wonderful children, but they did not always behave in a civil manner. Yes. And so I, I, I just reminded me of Santa that part of santa yeah you know the... yeah so well, yeah so it wasn't that what's that exactly and that's the the fearful god right like the the yeah that's what it comes from is trying to get people to behave yeah not to control them in an evil way yeah they're trying to get them to act more civilly and i can see that back in that time like things weren't all that civil yeah. in some ways at least from what we how it's depicted anyway yeah so then this whole like, so I, I, I took some pretty clear notes because I need the scientist probably to the, you, the science teacher, to, <laughs> the part like, okay, go on the notes and look at 7.50 PM. Sorry folks. And I put some asterisks because I was like, I was like, okay, I have to actually type some of this um, because I, <laughs> I need some help getting it explained to me. So the whole Holy Trinity, the whole part uh, about the, the Holy Spirit is an energy that exists between all matter and it is not the void. Yeah. It's the vibration of the void, but in a different way. what did you get of all that? Yeah, that, it was fascinating. It's the energy of the void with a bit of matter, of motion to it. Yeah, like it's like, and then they talked about it being the energy of just before you have a thought you know it's like that engagement like you've put it in drive you've put the car in drive but you haven't pressed the gas yet you know yes you're in park that's the void and then you put it in drive that's the holy spirit you're ready to go like that it's been activated and then you put on the gas and that's the creation of something so yeah i found that really fascinating and when well, they then likened it to the breath that it was like the breath of God, which again, like I said, I, I don't really know what the, what the religious teachings are around that, but um, like a long time ago, probably this spring, it'll be a year. Like one of my early messages, they talked about manifesting and my angels gave me a message about breathing, like manifesting through breathing. And, and that when we breathe in, the oxygen goes into our hemoglobin and it can bring our manifestation desires to our every cell of our body through our blood. And so they talked about breathing and manifesting through breathing. So I find this fascinating. Yes. They're now linking the idea of manifestation with God's breath. Yeah. But then activation of the energy. I know. And because the whole, like, so my face was pretty active during this part. <laughs> Because at first, like, I think she's just talking about, well, not just like the whole thing's amazing, but you know, about the breath of God. But then she gets into it, our breath with manifestation. Yes. Um, the breath is magical and you were created in the image of God. Because again, I'm like typing this word for word. This word. <laughs> you have this magical breath within you as well. Because I, I, if you've watched some of our past episodes, especially the ones where we talk about ourselves a bit in the CFB series, I've been really, really interested in developing skills of manifestation and creating my reality and and just, just manifestation in general and law of attraction and all this sort of thing. Um, you have this magical breath within you as well. So I'm taking this pretty literally. <laughs> You are not yet there in terms of activating this breath yet. However, when you live in Dharma, you will have this ability. And she said that when she comes in, she's going to bring in Dharma, right? Yeah. Your breath will become your manifestation tool. There's more to this that we'll explain later. However, just sit with it 
with the thought that your breath is a powerful, I can hardly read my own notes, is a powerful manifestation tool. Hey, so, cause that's another, you know, my magic balcony where yeah. I get my big, most profound thoughts and my downloads and communications from my guides from, from Big Bertha. Um, and often where things come together from like synthesize into- oh, It's truly magical. Your balcony is magical. <laughs> Thanks. It is really often when I'm telling Cindy, like I had this revelation, it happened on the balcony, this revelation or whatever, it happened on the balcony. And I, you know, have spent some time on the balcony thinking about manifestation. <laughs> I'm wanting to create morality and like, how, like how <laughs> I want to do it. And there was a time when I was guided to breathe like that to, to, to blow. And I didn't know what I was doing. Right. I'm just out there, you know, spending time talking to spirit and yeah. So I was like, and then I'm going like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> how do I do it? But I definitely had this feeling that it had something to do with breath. So it was just an yeah. inspired thought that got, I think that was why I made a face in the, when she, when you were channeling it, it was like, Oh my God. Like I had that thought on my balcony. And then you just, triggered in me and I think I've had this thought before I think I had this thought when they talked about breath being linked to manifestation before in that video from on my other channel Lady the Force 444 was the whole idea of because you you breathe it out like that and it's like when we get the the um dandelions that have all gone to seed and we blow and make a wish right yeah like the, the just I just love those. <laughs> and you make a wish get it like like that's what manifest. my manifestation is yeah. I'm manifesting something that's a wish Oh, so cool. <laughs> <laughs> All these little hidden um, right? breadcrumbs everywhere. Yeah. And then like, so, you're going to see me after we finish recording this video, like picking up these crystals and blowing on them. <laughs> 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 like, is this where, is this how? <laughs> because then Jesus always had a stone in his pocket because he used these stones to, okay, now it get my, uh, Stones are involved with the act, the act creation energy of the earth, right? Yes. Yeah. And so like, I feel the kinship now with Jesus more so than ever, because right? I have a million stones. I'm always picking up stones. I got stones in all my pockets, my coats everywhere. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. These aren't all just purchased crystals. They're uh, stones I've picked up too. And um Yeah. Just have different meanings. You found all kinds of heart shape. Is that yes? It's you, eh? Yeah. They kept finding. I I have one that I found um, when I was on that trip after my mom passed. Oh yes, yes. Um, I found some other lots of pretty cool stones, which is kind of interesting. But you have heart shaped stones anyway. So I guess they can be. So Jesus used those to do magic in some way to help people. Yeah. Here, pretty cool magic one, but it's. Here, I thought it was a magic stone. wand, but it's a magic stone in my pocket. Stone. And you're like, blown on it. I don't know. <laughs> It'll all come together. It will. Right. All will be revealed. Yes. But we have to be in Dharma first, which is living karma-free. What? Not in a karmic world? Um, well, the, the, the world was the, once. So when we have our great awakening, whether you're part of the first wave, the mass awakening, or you have your great awakening after that. Once you have your great awakening, you're you're walking in dharma. So, but there are still going to be people in the world that are living in karma. But you will now be in dharma. So you have no contracts with anybody. You have no karmic cycles that need to be completed. And you are creating because like we have our higher selves, but it's like we are our higher selves consciously on earth at that time. We are our entire souls consciously on earth after the great awakening. And right. so we instead of it being we're creating at night while we sleep and making plans with our guiding angels and then we wake up and we've forgotten it all there's going to be no forgetting it all because it's we're completely conscious of all of the other side the, the other side of where hmm. and the earth side all at the same time but what did she say at the beginning or very close to the beginning about her, when she comes in and my birth is what is bringing in the age of dharma yes because that's when the veil gets lifted for those of us that are ready, for those of us that have our great, have our great awakening. 
and th then we begin walking in Dharma. Right. Okay. So walking in Dharma, the way they've explained it is just, you don't have any karmic cycles left. There's no contracts. There's no nothing that you have to fulfill. You are yeah. free to create from a place of love because you are a complete love being on earth at that point. You are so, holding all of your essence consciously on earth. So when I have my great awakening, hopefully at the mass awakening, which then after she ushers in the time of Dharma, then I will understand why I'm walking around blowing on stones. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll work. Well, right? and maybe before then we might get, because this you said too, that as the love energy increases on earth, we're going to be starting to understand this more. And then she also so, talked about the first contact, right? Like in our, in, I'm pretty sure it's CFB2 is the one that talks about first contact and the first, um, the light beings from the first home that are going to make contact with us. And they're, they're, now they talked back then about giving us free energy. Yeah. And I was thinking of energy, like power, like, you know, instead of oil or gas or like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Energy in that way to power things. But um, she said something about them coming in. She said something in this message too, about them coming in and bringing that. And so I just have this feeling now that it's all tied together. Like his energy, yeah. free energy would be the, the energy of the spirit energy. Yeah. The manifestation part, like yeah. they would go together. If I could manifest anything, then I don't need a separate free energy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I agree. And I, and I went through the same sort of thing. I thought they, it was going to be something. Well, I, I sort of figured it might also have to do with manifestation, but it definitely seems like that's the direction it's going in now. Um, but I wanted to clarify too, because some people have asked questions about, about this first contact. And I just want to make sure that it's clear that this first contact yes. that they're talking about are beings of light. They are not beings incarnated in our universe that are considered aliens or extraterrestrials from another place yes. in our universe. That's not what this first contact is. There, there is, you know, the that. fear filled alien experience that we're going to be having that they talked about. But when they're talking about this first contact, these are light beings. They are not incarnated in our earth experience. They are coming straight from the other side of awareness to earth to con connect with us and help us get through this stage in our awakening. And they're going to be giving us information and stuff because they're from the the inventors, I think. It's yeah, like, so it's not Star Trek first contact is what she's saying. Yeah, it's with not, other, with extraterrestrial, not incarnated. Like, with extraterrestrial beings who are in Earth's atmosphere, in, in Earth's universe, sorry, Earth's universe. This is the light, the beings of light, like where we all come from. Yeah. Um, and from the home, yes. So it's the home of the inventors. It's the, whatever the episode is that's called the inventors. And I'm pretty sure it's CFB too. I'm going to have to it's start early, keeping yeah. a list of what our <laughs> titles of our videos are and which episode it was. But I'm sure, pretty sure it's CFB two is about the first ones that we're going to make contact with because eventually we're all going to meet uh, the home, the, the beings from the home that we last came from. We now know, like when we were getting those messages, I thought it was the home, the be all and end all, like the home we were from, but it's actually the last home that we've incarnated here from, right? Yes. Eventually we're going to have contact with all of them. Like I'm going to meet, you know, from my home and Bertha probably and that sort of thing. But the inventors, the home that, invents things and oh i don't remember they had two traits anyway they're going to be the first ones to make contact with uh earth yeah but the 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 distinction that i want to make is that they're not no i got it yeah extraterrestrials within earth's experience they are coming straight from the other side they are beings of light they're not incarnated in our world at all and won't be um so yeah, I just wanted yeah. to. There yeah. are two different the kinds of, of first contact. Yes, because that's where the term. That's where I learned the term first contact. Yes, right. When we was, think of first contact, we think of you know extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials, but in in the first few episodes of CFB of Conversations from Beyond, they talked about first contact a lot. So it's in there too. 
Okay, so I had asked her if she was done, and she had said, yes, she was done for that, but she had a little bit more to say. So I want to see what else she has to say before we get going. Yes. Okay. Okay, the pendulum is still. This is Paley again. I have a little bit more to add to clarify a few things. The energy of the Holy Spirit is an energy that is magical. And you will love working with this energy. Jesus worked with this energy when he walked as Jesus. And it is what allowed him to create miracles on earth. This energy of the Holy Spirit is a manifestation energy that is more powerful and more all altering than you can imagine. You can create everything and anything with this magical energy. This magical energy is the energy of Mother Earth. This magical energy is in every aspect of Mother Earth. The rocks and the crystals and the trees and the rivers and the lakes and the insects and the birds and the animals around the world. Most of the animals and plants on earth are made of this magical energy. However, some animals and plants are incarnated from a different place and do not hold this magical energy. Those animals and plants incarnate for a specific purpose and they hold a different energy to accomplish that purpose. But this is rare. So any part of Mother Nature holds this magical energy. The name of this energy 
that I am going to use instead of the Holy Spirit is the magical energy of awe. Okay, so she says she's done, but I'm going to ask her a question because I've had, um, I don't know if I had them. Okay, I'll look this up first. I don't know if I had them here. Like if, did we get that, that the Mother Earth energy was one of the homes? Yes. Yeah. So I want to ask her if. It's the if, Akashic Records home was also the, it was called, the episode was called The Energy of Mother Earth and the Akashic Record Keepers. Oh, really? The Akashic Record Keepers were on the, but those are two separate homes, though, weren't they? I don't know. I'm going, I'm actually. I'm pretty up. sure those were separate homes. Okay, anyway, I'm going to ask her if that's, yeah, if, to give me more information about that, because I've had private readings with people and been telling them, oh, you're home, you're from this home. And so now it's like, well, they're from the home of the Holy Spirit, <laughs> which now she's calling the magical, what was it? The magical? The energy of magic and awe. Okay. Magic, so the, the magical energy of all. Of awe. It was awe. A -W -E. Oh, awe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to ask her to sort of clarify that. Okay. The home of the energy that makes up Mother Earth is indeed the home of this energy, also known as the Holy Spirit. This energy is what I refer to as the magical energy of awe, A-W-E. People from this home have a magical and playful energy about them. This is also the home of fairies and dragons and all sorts of mythical creatures that are not really mythical. Okay. <laughs> okay, so wow, like I said, wow. <laughs> hmm, very interesting. And I, so I've been thinking about this. I was thinking about this today because Mike and I went out for a snow machine ride and we had a beautiful snowfall. And I, when we drive through in the snows and the trees, it's so beautiful. And I just love the jack pines. So I don't, for people that don't live around here, you might not know what a jack pine is, but a jack pine is a scraggly looking tree. It's, it's trunk is kind of twisted and goes in all directions. It's not symmetrical at all. Like it's not, you know, the spruce tree, which is the, the, quintessential Christmas tree, right? Like Jack Pines are like the opposite end of the spectrum. All over the place. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They're twisted and gnarly and yeah, like they, and so truth be told, I come from Toronto. I didn't grow up in Northern Ontario. There are no, I didn't grow up with Jack Pines around me. So I was a bit prejudiced against the Jack Pine Aww. when I first moved up here. <laughs> I didn't see the beauty in them. And so a few years ago, I received a message and I can't remember if it was Paley at that time or if it was my angels, but they told me that the jack pine holds the energy of magic on earth. And it just shifted my whole view of the jack pine. And so now I have all this love for the jack pine. And then since I was just thinking about this today, that since they've been now telling me of this this energy, like this energy of Mother Earth that is the energy of awe and magic. 
I was kind of thinking today, sitting on the back of the snow machine, going with my husband, and I was going, you know, they probably did that to shift my perception, but really it's all trees hold the energy of magic and awe, you know, like, but they just said, hey, the jack pines hold magical energy so that I would see them as the beauty, because they are like, now I look at them and I'm like, how did I ever not see the beauty in these amazing trees? I love that they're not symmetrical. I love that they're twisty and twirly and, and bare over here and full over there. Like they're just beautiful. Um, but yeah, so I thought that was cool that they did that and it shifted my entire perception, but really it's all, all trees. trees, all trees hold this magical energy because everything in mother earth holds this magical. Yeah. Energy. Not just the trees. And you did it like you were on a good couple of years of exploration of your relationship with tree, like just not that long ago and, and the magic of trees and getting messages from trees, just really, really connecting with trees. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, I, I talk all the time about my connection with going to nature, like with being in nature, but I, I struggle to get messages from trees or to actually really distinctly feel something when I touch a tree, but I know you've had like experiences oh, yeah. with, with oh, trees. Yeah. Well, so it's trees in particular have been part of your journey, you know, but it's yeah. all of nature, like. As the, as you were saying that, like that it what, it, what was it like the the rocks and the crystals and the trees and the rivers and the lakes and the insects and the birds and the animals <laughs> um, um, have hold the energy of this magical what is it magical, magical energy, energy of awe. I love it. Um, and as and they've I, also they've also described it as childlike wonder. And as I was taking that in, I thought, that's what I'm feeling when I go. Like, that's why I, yeah, you know, just feel that when I go there. Like, why? Why does it have to be in nature that I'm connecting to energy and raising my vibration and everything, you know? But it's because I'm standing in the middle of the magical energy of awe. Yeah. That's so cool. <sighs> so beautiful. I just so love then getting these messages. <laughs> Okay, so then the home of the keepers of the energy of Mother Earth are also, it's also the home of the keepers, I guess, of the magic of, magical energy of awe. Yeah, I don't know if they describe them as keepers, but they come from that home. Um, the home of the energy that makes up Mother Earth is indeed the home of this energy, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because I want to ask her, maybe not, I don't know. Okay, so because the home that I was from, CFB3, right? Mm -hmm. the, of course, I'm stuck on this manifestation thing. But it's been, it's not just because I'm like materialistic, like because I'm actually not. <laughs> um, it's the, the magic of it, right? Like I just want to manifest things. I just think it's, I've just always been drawn to it. So the home of the lighthouses, the home that stores all of the love energy in all that is, which is where I'm from, CFB3, uh, it, that's explained. It said that we are master manifestors because I was like, yes, we are. <laughs> and that's why I've always been drawn to it. So what's the connection with my folks, right? Like yeah. being the master manifestors and the other home of being where the magic is get yeah. it yeah yeah so i before I, I will ask her but i just want to explain what i've learned over the time that we so we're, we're born in the place where all souls are born which is just it's interesting to me that they don't call it a home they just call it the place where all souls are born um so i'm sure they'll explain more about that later and then we stay there for a little while and then we start to choose between the homes and our and our own personal learning and growth as a soul. And so we go to all of them and we end up at the Angels of Origin. Now, the first however many souls, and I don't know how many that is, I don't know if that was 144,000 or what, if that relates to that at all, but the first however many souls, they were created as angels of origin. And so they sort of started at that level and didn't have to go through all these other homes. Like when they split off from Jesus and like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the first however many 
had the energy of angels of origin and then keep going in the evolution cycle or the, the growth cycle of souls. Um, souls are born and then they go to these different homes and they go to all of them and then they become an angel of origin. Like they reach that level of angel of origin. So these high level souls started there at that level and then they've learned and grown from there. And then other souls go to these different homes and learn and grow and then graduate to become an angel of origin. And from everything that I've seen, or everything they've talked about, the angel of origin level is the, the level closest to source energy. It's the highest level. That... Where's incarnating in there? So then periodically while coming from, while at a home learning and stuff, like say, while well, I'm at the home, the home of the lighthouses, then I decide to incarnate because you know how, yes. yeah, okay. And then when I die and cross over again, then I might go to a different home to learn or I might go to the same home, right? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, because there's two different things going on. There's our soul growth and then there's, and then there's our earth experiences. Yeah. And so, yeah, we can incarnate from different homes depending on where we are in our soul's growth. And then even when we graduate, I'm not sure, but we may be able to say, okay, I've finished, I'm, I'm, I've done all the homes, I have all this knowledge, but I'm going to, I'm going to come back for this lifetime and I'm going to incarnate from this place because I want to have that energy. As I want to bring energy. those gifts and that energy yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you might not, because once you get to the angels of origin level, you have yeah, all of those all. within you. So that's what I was getting to with you, being from the home where all love energy is stored, you may already have that earth energy the magic energy of all within you already but it's not they didn't say i was a master manifester they said that the people the lighthouses yeah. like we named it the lighthouse we we had to make up these names they weren't given to us the homes were described and the traits of people who had incarnated from those homes were described um from the light beings that were our guests in these episodes and then we made up these names right to try and keep them straight so oh, yeah so we have something so, to refer to so the home of the energy that the, the home that stores all of the love energy and all that is, and those, and it also, the other trait was that they were master manifestors. <clears throat> Sorry, I got lost in my, in my words. What's the connection of being a master manifestor, but the, the energy is from a different home. The energy that you're using to manifest they didn't because, just say me like not everybody who's here from that home is also from that home are they well no not because not everybody has completed all the all these learning stages and right. it's not linear it's not like you go here and then go there and go there but the picture that i was getting was the the russian dolls yeah yeah so like okay. you go to this home you get that one then you go to that home so you know you people who are at your home maybe they've already had all these other ones like but yeah, like how That's do I have that perfect. energy to manifest with? Yeah. Yeah. And you, you're from the home that stores all the love energy. So that love energy is within your home. Like you're storing all of that. So the home in the energy in all the, the magical world. energy of awe is also stored at my home, you mean? Well, yeah, it's all That's funny. Well, yeah, because that home they said stores all the love energy in all that is somehow. And they said that people can, like, it can be used by other beings. Like, it's not, like, gatekeeped, but it has to be stored somewhere. And so it's stored in your home. I thought you said it, I thought you were saying that it was stored on the, at the home of the energy of the keepers of Mother Earth. No, well, they have, like, that makes up their home. But somehow your home stores all the love energy and all that yeah. is. Yeah, I don't really I don't get how that is anyway, I know. Exactly. We can't understand these things. But let's ask and see what she says. Okay, this is Pele again. This is a complicated love energy trait to explain. There is a home where the energy is the energy of magic and awe. This is 
the ultimate manifestation energy. This is the energy described as the breath of God. This is the energy described as the Holy Spirit. Now, you are from the home of all the love energy in all the universe. This includes the energy of this home of magic and awe. However, you also have been through all the homes and you have all the energy of all the homes. The energy of the place where all the love energy in the universe is stored is the closest energy to the angels of origin. So you have within your energy all the energy of all the universe plus you have all the energy of all the homes because of your placement in the energetic lineup of homes. So this is why you are from a place that specializes in manifestation. And you have the added advantage of having access to all the love energy in all that is. Now, I have made a distinction here. I said that your home stores all the love energy in the universe. However, you have access to all the love energy in all that is. You do not store the love energy of source. The void is not included in the universe. However, the void holds an infinite amount of potential energy and you have access to all that energy. So you have a broader range of ability to manifest because of your home's placement in all that is. Your home encompasses the energy of all the homes outside of the angels of origin. The angels of origin encompass all the love energy of all the homes aside from source energy. And source energy encompasses all the love energy of all the homes, period. It is a bit like the Russian doll analogy with a few exceptions. 
those exceptions will be for another day. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I also got from that that perhaps I might be about to graduate. Yeah. Right? Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And I think there's also people who have graduated then go back to these homes and become teachers. Yes. Or leaders in some way. So you could have already grad, you know what I mean? You, yeah. Just because you incarnated from there doesn't mean you haven't graduated from there already. It's very complex. <laughs> no, graduate, I mean, from all of them. No, I know. That's oh, okay. It also explains to me, like, what I, ha I have to, I'm going to have to watch this video back 10 times, but that last little part also kind of explains to me why I've been so borderline obsessed with manifestation all my life. Well, not all my life. The last 30 years you know what i mean is because it's in me like that it's yes. where i come from is about that so i can see that it would want to be coming you know yeah. makes me feel even less materialistic <laughs> it's not necessarily always material things it's situations and outcomes and i just want to manifest yeah so cool thank you pele well and just the you fun of that answers. creation yeah energy. like all of it like it's not just yeah playful and fun yeah like the way they've described the magic the the magic of it, I think, exactly. is what I, you know. Which is something I've been all about. I'm mm. all about the magic. I always have. I just love talking about yes. it. And I've been less drawn to it. I thought you would be excited when she talked about fairies. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's another thing that you've been drawn to that I kind of have. We really, we just notice when one of us is drawn to something. We'll go like, yeah, well, that's a you thing. So you might want to pay attention to it, like that it's for you. Yes. Um, the home of fairies and dragons, right? Yeah, so that's what I was getting to was this home that they've described because they describe a little bit when I have a personal reading with someone and they're from, like, they'll tell me a little bit about their home energy. Um, yeah, like the way that they're describing it, it truly is like this incredibly magical place with all of these magical beings. And and they've also said that this is the place where the people, the, the beings and the, and the nature are almost indistinguishable from from each other like they're the beings in this place are so intertwined with nature that it's hard to tell them apart ever cool yeah. i was thinking are there unicorns i used to be very very taken with unicorns like in my end now we're talking teen years and in my 20s and uh, when she was saying dragons and fairies i was thinking oh, and unicorns <laughs> i think she did mention unicorns at, at one point in somewhere that i've gotten a message yeah Right. All kinds of really cool things. Like she said, all these mythical creatures that we thought were mythical, not necessarily mythical. So, yeah. Cool. It is, it sounds like, it sounds like the playground of all that is. Like, yes. it's just this, they've just, like I said, childlike wonder. Like, it just sounds like, you want to go on vacation? Go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the Disney <laughs> world. <laughs> Where to go? The Disney world. Yeah, yeah. I get it what Magical a winding moment. message like just where this has gone like right you know we start off yes. talking about mary being looked after and it just went around and around and around and around yeah and land is here for sure pretty cool all right do you have anything else to ask Pele or anything nope and she had said she was done so i think i think we're good Pele has possibly left the building <laughs> <laughs> well Thank you, Pele, and thank you, Cindy, for channeling for us. And uh, thank you for joining us. And if you have uh, comments, I'd love to hear your reactions and um, whatever you have, you'd like to add in the comments. And you were about to say something, Cindy. Oh no, okay. Sorry. I was. You thanked me, so I was thanking you because oh. it takes both of us here to do this. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm having so much fun doing it. Me Thanks too. so much for joining us, folks. We'll see you as uh, soon in the next episode. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye.